Hello there friends, today we're taking a look at Unicorn Overlord, a tactical role-playing game developed by Vanillaware and available on the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, and the Nintendo Switch. I'm currently just over 26 hours into my playthrough, and I just want to take this time to record my initial impressions and give you a relatively spoiler-free look at this latest addition to Vanillaware's catalog. Bottom line up front, I think this game is fantastic, and I think you'll like it too if you like tactical role-playing games. The art direction and the story brings me back to Final Fantasy Tactics, while the team building and combat flow reminds me of Fire Emblem. To where, I might ask? Nigh every last of Cornea's lords has forsaken us in favor of the traitor Valmor. The game opens up in the middle of a military coup in the Kingdom of Cornea. Your mother, the Queen, sends you away under the protection of the Knight Joseph. As you're spirited away, the Queen and her squad engage the enemy forces head on. It's at this point you are immediately introduced to the game's most engaging mechanic, the automatic combat system. Instead of directly taking control of your units, you'll find that they start attacking and using their abilities on their own, without your input. This tactics system has units on each side acting in accordance with basic tactics that allow you to set priorities and conditions for each of your unit's abilities. In combat, these tactics are split into active and passive abilities. These active abilities are performed on the unit's turn, while the passive abilities are performed in reaction to events occurring in battle. For example, my mid-game Scarlet has two active abilities and three passive abilities. The first, and highest priority, is given to Curing Call, that will cast on her turn if one of her allies is below 75% health. Otherwise, she defaults to Holy Light, a magical attack that is set to prioritize armored enemies. She also currently has three passive abilities. A quick heal occurs when an ally is hit by an attack, but will only proc when that ally's health is below 75%. Passive Miracle activates when Scarlet is on the receiving end of an ally's passive ability, and in turn will grant them additional passive points. Finally, Quick Barrier is an incredibly useful skill that activates just before an ally is attacked, and provides them a shield that reduces the damage of an attack by 50%. Combined with lower initiative and a relative safety of the back lines, Scarlet's kit acts as a strong support for the rest of the squad, preventing significant amounts of damage and healing the damage that gets through. Now that might sound a bit complex, especially considering that this was just one unit in one squad, but the game does a good job of easing you into the tactic system. I played on the second highest difficulty, and I was at least 10 hours into the game before I felt the need to directly engage with the system. Unicorn Overlord's default tactics work pretty well in the early game, and may not even need to be adjusted at the easier difficulty levels. I'll be saving a more in-depth overview of the tactical system and the combat mechanics in general in the full review to come once I finish the game. Make sure you like and subscribe to ensure you don't miss out on any updates. Moving on to the story, and I'll be as vague and as spoiler free as possible. The opening sequence sets the tone and overarching story for the rest of the game. You are the young heir who is spirited away in the face of an overwhelming enemy force. Your mother faces down General Valmor and his forces in order to give you an opportunity to flee. Approximately 10 years later, you find yourself returning to build and lead the Liberation Army in order to reclaim Cornea and potentially the rest of the world from this evil dictator. For me, this story works best alongside the open world gameplay and the world map. As you traverse in the overworld, the game is pleasantly open. You have some main story objectives that provide general guidance and direction, but you'll also be drawn to explore. You can liberate towns from the Zenorian army, and as a reward, each town provides access to a unique shop. With a little bit of rebuilding, you can also station a guard at that town to collect resources for you as you progress your military campaign. And that's what it really feels like, a full-fledged military campaign against overwhelmingly powerful enemies. Each step along the way, you gather more allies, you build a stronger army, and piece by piece it begins to feel a bit more achievable. Alongside the main story missions and the liberation of towns, you'll also occasionally come across side quests that provide additional backstory for the region and the potential to recruit allies. And I mean it when I say potential. It's possible to miss or even straight up execute potential recruitable units. During one of the early town liberations, I was faced with the decision to either recruit the enemy commander or hand him over to the authorities. Due to his gleefully evil personality, I decided to turn him over rather than add him to my army. It's a choice that was met with some interesting and still developing consequences, and it was nice to see the game provided me with meaningful and impactful decisions. On the other hand, I did miss a pair of sisters in an early side mission because I missed the hint that I should allow the first to speak to the second before we engaged in battle. This hint is often repeated, and now that I know what I'm looking for, 
I'm a bit more careful when it occurs. If only to highlight that loss, your allies, both required and optional, often step up at major story junctions to provide insights and even change the course of an event entirely. It added weight to my earlier decisions. It also prompted me to fully explore each region and ensure I hadn't missed anyone or anything that may have had a greater impact on the story. In summary, Unicorn Overlord successfully blends deep gameplay mechanics with a rich storytelling that is sure to be a rewarding experience for fans of the tactical role-playing genre. Its innovative combat system and impactful decision-making contribute to an overwhelmingly enjoyable experience. While there are some complexities to navigate, the game's intuitive design and gradual learning curve ensure it's an enjoyable experience. I am thoroughly looking forward to finishing the game, and if you want to catch this process live, I also stream on Twitch. The link will be in the description. Thank you for joining me in my initial impressions of Unicorn Overlord. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated with the full review and other gaming content, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time. Be restored. We strive together.